This week's supersizer is Dawn Grant from Wrexham. My obsession with food is very much like a love affair on a plate. It's quantity rather than quality. So it's more is better. 47-year-old Dawn feeds her insatiable appetite with meat, meat and more meat. Big joints of beef, bacon, sausage. There's very little green stuff. In fact, there's no green stuff. But that's not all this supersizer is partial to. I do like chocolate as well, and I love tiramisu. Dawn's vast portions of fatty food are starting to seriously affect her health. I've become asthmatic in the last two years. I get backache, pains in my knees. I often get sweat rashes, and that's under my belly and under my boobs. And that is purely down to my weight. But her binging days are numbered as she enters Dr Christian's no-nonsense feeding clinic. Let's get your weight measured straight away, sorry. Dawn's been put through a thorough medical examination to assess how serious her problems are. A healthy weight for someone who's five foot four is between eight and ten stone, but Dawn weighs in at a whopping 18 stone four pounds. BMI, I've worked out as 45. A healthy BMI is between 20 and 25, so this makes Dawn morbidly obese. It means a significant, serious risk of disease, ill health, premature death from your weight. Okay. Has it, would you say, gone a little bit out of control now? It's very out of control because I don't actually know when I'm hungry anymore. Mm. You know, I finish something and then I eat something else. You have one of the highest cholesterols I've seen in a long time. Really? And will lead to a heart attack or a stroke within five or ten years. Ooh. You won't make it beyond that if you go on like this. When Christian said to me, come 55, I'll have a heart attack, that's as bad as it gets. But Dawn's not the only one on Dr Christian's radar. Meet 22-year-old university student Charlene Sakira from Harrow. Some people would say that I'm a fussy eater because when I have a curry and rice, I tend to pick out the pieces of meat within the curry because I don't like the oil and I don't like the texture of the rest of the sauce. Charlene only eats teeny tiny portions because she says she's too busy or too tired. When she comes from uni, she'll just go straight to sleep. And if I tell her to wake up, I say, come on, you've got to eat. And she's so tired that she will not open her eyes. I tend to skip breakfast quite a lot. Obviously, I'd rather get more sleep than wake up early and have breakfast. It becomes more for chore. And also, lunch tends to be quite quick if I've got a lot of lectures or I'm very busy trying to hand in coursework. And then from then, when I've come home, I just wanted to crash and go to sleep and not eat dinner. It's time to put a stop to her faddy eating as Charlene joins Dawn at the feeding clinic. When I look in the mirror, I tend to think that I'm quite skinny or bony. 24 inches around your tummy. And I don't like my arms or my wrists and my legs or my ankles. At five foot two, Charlene should weigh between seven and a half and ten stone. But her tiny portions mean that she only weighs five stone 13 pounds. So why have you become concerned with your weight or why have you decided you want to come and do this and try and put some weight on? Because I've seen the way it affects my life. Like when I study and stuff, I don't really want to have to come home and go to sleep and not eat and feel so tired. That's the main thing? Yeah. Yeah? OK. Charlene's concerned about her energy levels, but Dr Christian's tests have shown another side effect of her poor diet. Your cholesterol levels, which are all a bit raised. OK. Does that surprise you? Yeah. I think there's a bit of a myth that fat people have high cholesterol yeah. and skinny people don't, but you're a living example of skinny people that has raised cholesterol because your diet isn't great. I was quite surprised about the cholesterol. It made me think a lot more about what I eat and the types of foods that I eat. Although physically Dawn and Charlene are chalk and cheese, they've both got destructive diets. But what will they make of each other? I'm Dawn. Hi. Where do your organs fit? You see where mine go? When I looked at her, all I could think about was the fat. Because, like, her tummy was, like, really big, and even, like, her underwear and stuff, she was, like, falling out of it. So what sort of, like, size trousers would you wear? 22. Oh, she is so thin. There is nothing of her. The big 
quickest thing about her is her hair. Let <laughs> me think I'm going to be hungry. I think maybe she loves food too much. I think this diet swap's going to be harder than I originally thought. For the next five days, these polar opposites are going to be swapping diets to show them that their portions are way out of kilter and to shock them into changing their terrible eating habits. They've both kept a food diary of a typical week's meals. Time to see the shocking truth of what really goes in their mouths. OK, Charlene, we're going to start with you. And I like to start at the top of the day with your breakfast. How many times do you miss breakfast? About three times. Bit of cereal, bit of toast. A bit uninspiring breakfast, aren't they? There's nothing there. Should we go on to lunch? Sandwich, that's a fairly standard lunch thing. What else? That looks like a burger and chips and milkshake. Remember we were talking a little bit about saturated fats and cholesterols, and you asked me where yeah. is the cholesterol coming from in your diet? Well, that's one of the places. Dinner time now. How are you feeling at this point? Tired. Looking forward to a big slap-up meal? Sometimes. You do? Yeah. Is that the big slap-up meal? What is that? Um, brown rice. And a bit of potato. OK, well, that was one of your slap-up meals. Talk me through that. There's some Yorkshire puddings. What else? I think it's chicken and potatoes. So that, to me, really looks like the first proper balanced meal that I've actually seen. Charlene should be eating 2,000 calories a day, but her tiny portions mean she's consuming only 1,400, which is the recommended amount for a four- to six-year-old girl. You're deficient in pretty much everything. There's just not enough food there at all for a healthy adult. OK, so, Dawn, should we do breakfast? Yes. OK, hold on tight. Here we go. <coughs> what on earth is that? Tiramisu. Why? Because it's there in the fridge. Let's see what else there is, then. Bacon, sausage, mushrooms, egg, toast, more sausage, bacon, egg, mushrooms, toast. Some pasties, too. Mm. Let's go on to lunches. Sandwiches. Mm. Half a chicken? Half to a full chicken, really. For lunch? Yeah. It's mental. She's not wrong. It is mental. It's an awful lot of food. Mm. Do you ever have a vegetable? No! No? Oh, no. Why not? They take up room on the plate. It's not funny. This is one of the worst diets that I have seen, and I want you to take this seriously now, OK? Dinners. OK, that's an entire chicken. Pork chops. Over a year, meat maniac Dawn is wolfing down 208 whole chickens, 1,716 rashers of bacon, 3,800 sausages, 36,000 slices of deli meat and 36 kilos of minced beef. This meat-laden diet means she's consuming 1,000% more than the recommended amount of protein, which could lead to heart disease, kidney damage, osteoporosis and several types of cancer. Every bit of rind that you put in your mouth is adding to the artery-clogging cholesterol. But that's not all your snacks, is it? And Dawn washes the whole lot down with six litres of caffeine-laden diet cola every day. You are stimulating your pleasure centres in your brain. Those are the same centres that get stimulated by cocaine and heroin. It's an addiction, this, and this is why you're going to find it hard to change, but you must, because it's killing you. Dawn's gorging on a staggering 8,000 calories a day, the equivalent of eating for four. I actually thought we were done at one point, and then more came, and then the snacks came, and then I thought, wow, this is far too much. If someone can eat three times the amount that I can eat, then surely I could try to eat a bit more. This week's feeding clinic residents are meat maniac Dawn and cereal meal skipper Charlene. They're swapping diets to get Dawn to cut back on the huge portions and Charlene to increase hers. Let's go and eat. Super skinny Charlene's dish du jour is a 20-ounce steak with three large flat mushrooms topped with a generous dollop of pate and grilled cheese and a pint of cola to wash it down. While for supersized Dawn, it's four spoons of brown rice and half a boiled potato. It's going to be the first brown rice I've ever had. It's very, um, chewy. Larger people tend to eat quickly. They do. But do you think it's because you, you can get more in mm. in a short amount of time? It is. It's exactly what it is. So how can we put pate on the mushroom and then cheese? Because it's just nice. 
It's not long before Dawn's gulped down her bland meal. It's a starter, Dawn. <laughs> but Charlene is struggling with her enormous mound of meat. Have you had any steak? No. Are you avoiding the steak? Yeah, because I don't like meat that's, like, chewy. And... Are you done, Charlene? I can feel my tummy. <laughs> really? Now, yeah. I do think it's really obvious where she's going wrong because she's just putting on, like, so much saturated fats into everything she eats. I'm quite scared now. I think reality has just kicked in with the meal. I think I'm going to be very, very hungry. Next morning, and Dawn's feeling the effects of 24 hours of going cold turkey from her meat and caffeine addiction. I'm so tired and so headachy and just... I feel really ill. And there's not much on the breakfast menu to cheer her up. Is that it? Yeah. But for Charlene, there's a monster meaty fry-up, including a whole packet of sausages, an entire packet of bacon, scrambled eggs, white bread and the ever-present cola. What's up with the six sausages? Well, because there's six in a pack. So you have to keep the whole pack. Full pack. But why? Because well, I can. <laughs> so you are eating the sausage. That's good. Not so keen on the fat, though. No, I can see that. You know, you're cutting the best bits off. That's the worst bits in my book. <laughs> you say they're the best bits. Yeah, I eat the fat first. And before long, finickety Charlene is making excuses to avoid the meal in front of her. Would you eat the skin of the sausages? Obviously. If I see it, I tend to remove it. <laughs> Open your mouth and put it in. And if I won't like something, then I won't eat it. Is that it? Is that all you can manage? That is. You eat quite a, a child-sized portion, really. Which, you know, I admit that is excessive. But I also do not think that this is enough for anybody. For Dawn, starved of all her usual fixes, this is incredibly tough. I didn't think I would go through the hunger and the emotions that come with that. Like any other addiction, Food addicts are out of control. Many, like Dawn, binge on foods laden with fat, salt or sugar, which releases serotonin, giving them an instant high. Common signs of withdrawal are depression, headaches, insomnia and irritability. Compulsive overeaters believe it's more difficult to recover from than other addiction because they have to face their demons three times a day. For more information, go to channel4.com forward slash supersize v super skinny.